What's up, y'all? We are back with another cooking video. Y'all loved the first video, the ramen pack video. Susan Moore, you know? I can cook, so I might as well share what I know with everybody else. Before we get into the cooking, we got to do some kind of like shoji backstory or shoji lore. If y'all don't know, I am originally from Wisconsin. Recently, it's fucking cold as shit here. I woke up this morning and it was like negative eight degrees without wind chill. I fucking hate it here. But the weather also kind of is the reason what I'm why I am cooking today. What I'm cooking today, does that make sense? Because it's supposed to like keep away those cold demons. I mean, it's probably the title, so you know that I'm cooking chili already. And then also, I gotta get serious for a second. This is a message to all the Texans out there. This is Midwestern chili. So there will be tomatoes. There are beans. And guess what? It's still chili. Talking to you, Kopi. Little bitch. Love you, though. Another thing before we get started. This recipe does take, like, almost three hours long in total. You do gotta kind of, like plan ahead a lot of it is just kind of leaving it on a, like a low heat and like simmering mainly and another thing is that we i kind of made this recipe purposely to have leftovers um, so you might want to like adjust what i put in here to your household or your preferences or whatever you can do whatever you want this is kind of just like this for like for my family my house is a, a or total people including me so we like to cook a lot of stuff to have leftovers. Another quick word, I am a trained professional. So if you see me do anything weird with a knife, like peeling an onion, don't try that. I know how to do it safely. Okay, good talk. Alrighty team, let's get cooking. Quick tip with your cutting board. If it's moving all around, put a damp paper towel and it'll stop moving. Perfect, easy peasy. To start off the chili, you're gonna cut up or dice up some two onions. If you don't know how to dice, I do show you, so you can follow along. But you want to, you do want to cut the top of the onion, but leave the core. You need to do this so like the core keeps all the onion like attached, so it's easier to dice. So slice the onion however many times I kind of do. It depends on how big you want them or small you want them. You don't want them like too small, but you want them big enough to where like you can actually see them in the chili, but not big enough to where it's like a whole sliver. You know what I mean? You still want dice. Also, when you're slicing the onion, don't go fully. You want to leave a little bit on the back end so like it stays attached as well. You don't want to cut through the whole onion. When you slice again on the side of the onion, and you cut, and you cut, and then it dices. And then, yeah, that's how you dice an onion. This, I'm sure there's other ways, but this is how I was trained. This is how I've known for years. So, do as you will. All right, I need to go in the pot, and now it's time to put a can, piece this can of diced tomatoes. I've always used this specific can with these specific add-ons in it. It just tastes better, but I, you do want to drain the water out of the can. There will still be water in the tomatoes, and that's perfectly fine. Tomatoes are like, most most tomatoes are full of water anyway. So we need to cook that water out before adding the meat. The tomato water will also kind of help um, the onion steam a little bit, as well as the butter that we're going to be adding here. And this is going to be the, fir the, the, great, the first time we're going to start seasoning. So we season this recipe in layers um, for the best flavor profile towards the end. Doing this kind of makes sure that everything in the pot has some sort of seasoning or flavor. So you're not getting a bite of anything bland. So yeah, I seasoned it here with salt and pepper and then chili powder. When I keep when I use the chili powder uh, quite a bit to keep it around. Um, I you, you probably could keep all three of them around actually. But the chili powder is the main one that we'll be using a lot of more on 44. 
Alright, so you have your seasoning stirred up. Mix it up. Me time. I use about four. Shit. Yeah, I have to be right back. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be right back. Hi. Sorry about that. So I have, I have about four pounds of ground beef. Remember, I made this. I made this to have leftovers. So after the meat is fully cooked, water is kind of more down and like. It's just kind of like the, the onions and the tomatoes and then the meat. You season the meat. So, pepper. No, did I put pepper with the meat? I don't think I did actually. Might have just salted it a little bit and then maybe put some more chili powder in it. I do think, I think that's what I did. Um, season it, mix it all up again. And then that's when we're going to add the tomato paste. Tomato paste. It's specifically, hunt tomato paste. I love Hunts the most. I've used it for my barbecue sauces that I've made that might could be on a future video. Uh, I've made other like tomato sauces, like spaghetti sauce or like red sauce for like, homemade pizzas for with it. Like I use Hunts for everything because I just love the taste of it more. So we use Hunts. Hunts tomato paste, and we also use Hunts tomato sauce, like the cartons later on, too. But yes, three cans of like the medium size of Hunts tomato paste. It is awesome. One of my favorite tomato pastes. It's, it's so good. Doesn't really need anything else to like add flavor to it. It's just that good. After all three are in, you gotta get that mixed in and then like ready for action you know we gotta like i don't know just, yeah and then after the tomato paste is all like, cooked, like cleaned up or cleaned up the fuck? mixed up mixed in with the meat and everything else that's when we're gonna add the tomato sauce or the hunts tomato sauce i have three cartons that i use it did seem kind of a lot, but it does reduce down. So use a pan that might be like, big enough that you're gonna do exactly how I do it. You don't have to remember. I leftovers, leftovers, leftovers. leftovers. Yeah, that's what this recipe is. Really. It's specifically for leftovers. All right, so tomato sauce goes in. This is probably one of the last times. We are gonna season it without tasting it first. So, more chili powder, once again, mix it in. Probably spill everywhere. I, I know, it seems like these in his videos, I just like spilling. I spilled in the ramen video, and then I spilled in this video. It like bubbled over when I was mixing one. I don't know if I have that in, here, in the video though. I, yeah, and then once the tomato sauce is in, and all the seasonings all you season again to taste and well it tastes good it's really just letting it simmer um, and that's this is where it takes the longest the longest of time like cut you got you want to put it on a low heat and cover it up and just kind of like let it go until i cooked this at two p.m in the afternoon and i didn't eat it until like 5 40. 5:30. So it from two to like 4:30. Um, well, no, more like three, like 3:30 to 4:30 is when I kind of let it simmer fully, or when you let it simmer. While you want to mix as well in between that time, um, otherwise it can get like burnt at the bottom. Um, of the pan, so you do want to keep mixing it occasionally. Occasionally, I know um, 
Oh, and you also added the beans. Yeah, um, that's pretty much it. You just kind of want to let it go. One thing that I do after like the chili is all done and all, and all that is I like to like fix things on top. Like sometimes I'll have like onions diced, but I didn't really want to cut any more onions. Those onions are strong. Hope you guys enjoy this chili. Give me in a photo on Twitter of you guys making it or are you eating it? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go now.